Malaysia memulakan suku pertama tahun ini dengan sentimen positif susulan pertumbuhan ekonomi luar jangkaan sebanyak 10.1%. Ini dijangka akan turut menyokong uh, aspirasi Perdana Menteri mengangkat negara ke sebuah ekonomi berpendapatan tinggi menerusi model baru ekonomi. Mac lepas, kerajaan telah mengumumkan fasa pertama model berkenaan yang antara lain menyeru kepada lebih Uh, peranan lebih uh, besar pihak swasta dalam pelaburan domestik dan sependa pengumuman rancangan Malaysia ke-10 Jun ini, Astro Wani akan mula mengupas isu-isu berkaitan pengumuman pertama model dan apa jangkaan bagi pengumuman kedua. Bersama kita di Bilik Berita adalah pengarah uh, pengarang Oxford Business Group Stephen Jenkinson bersama wartawan Riza Sukapli. Riza, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Now, let's sure. start with the new economic model and its right. uh, implementation. People, yeah. I think, are still puzzled as to when it will start and how and what form it mm -hmm. will take. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? And how do you make sure people really understand where the country is going to? Yeah, yeah. No, I think the key thing to understand is that, is, is that the new economic model is it's not a government policy. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be implemented and executed through the 10th Malaysia Plan. So, that, you know, so that's the first key difference. So in terms of kind of new, um, uh, new projects, new initiatives, it, it'll come through the 10th Malaysia Plan. Mm -hmm. I think the, the key thing that, that, that people uh, would need to understand about this whole transition, because it, it's, it sounds like a, like, a, you know, it's, like it's a big idea, mm -hmm. like we're going to become the next Silicon Valley, we're going to replicate Korea and Taiwan. I think that's the misunderstanding. What, what Malaysia would, would need to actually try and develop is, is its own model of innovation, because, mm -hmm. because it can't be a Silicon Valley where it's about finding new sources of wealth and developing new, co um, new, new companies around that. In Korea, for example, Taiwan, it's been very much about re-engineering engineering, very high-tech products. And, Malaysia, and, and then, of course, you know, th these countries have the national champions uh, mm -hmm. like Samsung and the Aces to actually push these products. Malaysia th doesn't have these things, but it has other uh, very good advantages. Um, I mean, if we look at the economy, it's dominated by SMEs mm -hmm. that play mostly in the middle to like high part of the international supply chain. Um, and this is really where um, uh, innovation can take place so it's it's a different type and i think that the the, the government is well it's 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 a work in progress but mm -hmm. this model would have to filter around be you know base, base become part of smes and 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 the, the key term here is productivity mm -hmm. it's 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 not so much uh, invention creation i mean that's a part of it but it's productivity to make sure that 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 these companies are productive that they're competitive and that they can stay in the supply chain so Th that will have to, it's a change that will have to go very deep. It's, it's not something that can just be um, created one day and then, and then made the next. So mm -hmm. it'll take 5, 10, 20 years. But I think briefly the, yeah. the people need to see something physical, something that they can see and aspire to follow or mm -hmm. to, to, to create in the, um, to subsequently. But how do you think this will happen and when do you think this will happen? I think um, in terms of the first real initiative which is, which is, you know, is going to drive this is, is the National Innovation Centre. I, mm -hmm. I mean this will be out very soon. I think in June, July there's, there's going to be a big announcement about that. Um, basically, uh, I mean, but right now it's a bit like a broken vase that's, that's, that's on the floor. It's like very scattered. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th th this is a good start to pull everything together, pull the researchers, pull the research, you know, and the universities and the venture capital and, and all the different parts of the ecosystem and, and make that into, you know, uh, it, you know, like into something tangible that you can see. So I think that you will see in terms of something tangible. For, for the rest, a lot of it is going to depend on, on more linkages between universities and companies. Um, also, also, also having more entrepreneurs, but you know, perhaps what you said, it's you know, in, in, in terms of the visual aspect, Malaysia might need its own national champion, its own Acer, its own Samsung, its own Sony to actually push this and, and give something, you know, give the people something to aspire to. What are some of the key elements or sectors that maybe the government should concentrate on or should highlight the 10 MP and the subsequent budget in order to achieve that high income nation status? Yeah, I think there's there's two points to that. Uh, the first is is probably what what the government doesn't do, mm -hmm. in you know in the sense that the, the, the government also has to step out. I mean, it has to let the private sector evolve. Mm -hmm. So I think you know looking to see what the government does. I think it's also more important to see what the government doesn't do in terms of leaving the private sector to you know to basically come up with its own creativity and innovation. I think the second part in terms of something tangible in a budget right now, uh, government expenditure on R and D, and when I mean government, it's quasi government. Um, GLCs, mm -hmm. government departments, it comes up to 0.68% uh, of GDP, mm -hmm. which is quite low. Um, I mean, and then of course, like they want to push that up to 1% of GDP in the Tense Malaysia plan. If you want to see something tangible from the government, th that's really where they can spend more. And this is more, more on the more on the high end side. In, in comparison, debt to other countries like Korea, Singapore, Japan, how how yeah. big is one percent of the GDP uh, to it, research and development? It's okay, but it's mm -hmm. but it, but it's not playing at the same level as as for example Korea and Japan, where it's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's easy. I think Japan, uh, sorry, uh, Korea 
is actually four to five percent. Most advanced countries are are around the three percent range. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in that sense, uh, investment also by the private sector is not that large. So, also ways that the government can actually stimulate that. I think that's the key things that you should look out for in the coming budgets. Okay, um, this week Malaysia is hosting the w, uh, WIEF. Yeah. And, and how do you think Malaysia can maybe create a niche for itself in terms of maybe Islamic finance mm -hmm. or halal hub or things like that? How do you think and how um, soon do we have to get there before people get there? Yeah, I think, I mean, we, we work in about 33 countries around mm -hmm. the world, particularly the Middle East. We have a lot of questions, a lot of demand about Malaysia. Malaysia has done all the right things, the, 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 the institutions the infrastructure uh, of course there's a new interbank uh, system that's established this uh, uh, this year there's a new central bank act so like all these things are basically contributing you know of course the the, the issuance of the sovereign to cook mm -hmm. and, and the timing is excellent particularly with all the background noises Greece is making a very strong statement I mean it, it's not what it's uh, what it's um, not doing it's 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 actually what it's doing and, and you know continuing that and, and then the recognition is is already there so I think Malaysia has a has a niche and also Islamic finance has been the best performing sector during the during the ninth Malaysia plan period. So okay. it, it really has achieved quite a lot. Okay, let's talk about this, this grid, yellow, yellow, yellow books. I, I, okay. I see them everywhere. I don't know what's in them, but I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. And can you please explain to us briefly sure. what these yellow books are? I see Qatar, Nigeria and yeah. all that. But how do you make sure that the information that you have this yellow book get, get translated and be used by people who really matter. Okay, um, what we do, I mean, we, we operate in, in about 33 countries and we, and we produce economic intelligence for investors. When people want to invest in the country, they basically rely on our information and we partner with local government institutions. So in Malaysia, it's, it's with the Economic Planning Unit, the Prime Minister Department, and also private sector institutions through Maybank. So they are our, our two primary partners. And, and we basically, sell these books around the world. Mm -hmm. and Malaysia, of the 33 books we have, has always been in the top five. Mm -hmm. uh, there's it it is a lot of interest, you know, there's a lot of demand for, for, for like more knowledge about Malaysia. So, mm -hmm. so that's basically how we, how, we, how we do it. Okay, thank you very yeah. much, Stephen. Tadi Ketua Pengarah Oxford Business Group, Stephen Dijkhausen, membincangkan tentang uh, model baru ekonomi dan juga uh, tentang uh, kemana kahala itu juga kerajaan dalam uh, plan Malaysia, atau perancangan Malaysia ke-10 ini. Teruskan kepada studio, okay? Yeah.